Hello, my name is Håkon and today I'm going to show you another little trick you can use if you're using a MIDI fighter twister together with an Empress Effects Zoya. This might also work with other controllers if they have lights similar to the MIDI fighter twister. The idea is that you treat the knob of the MIDI fighter twister as a switch, a multi value switch. So if you consider each of these lights around it as a very specific switch location and if you set the lights to be bar or dot in the setup of the midi fighter twister they only light up when you get to a certain value. So let's just show you how this works. So now I'm at zero as you can see here, it's um, there's no lights on this knob here on the MIDI fighter twister. If I start twisting it, I get to one. And you can see as I go from zero to one, that is from one value to the next on the MIDI fighter twister. And then I keep twisting it and the next light comes on there. And you can see it goes to two and then it's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and it goes all the way up to 11, which is great. So it's one better than 10. So it goes up to 11, very nice. Okay, so how do I do this? Um, you might think that it would be possible to use a switch uh, module on the Zoya, but because of the way this works, the first light comes on when the, the MIDI value that's sent out from the MIDI fighter twister is just one, and the other ones are evenly spaced out. And that means you can't actually use a switch, or you could do, but it needs a little bit of, of adjustment if you want to use that. But there is an easier way and I showed this in a recent video where I showed how to create a switch only with comparators and nothing else. And that's indeed what I've used here. So here I've got 12 comparators. Um, and there wasn't enough space to show all of them now, so they got two right on the corner here as well. Um, and the idea is that... Um, I'll just move these to... another page so you can actually see them properly. So um, now the way a comparator works on the Zoya is it has two input values known as the positive and the negative input. And the way it works is as long as the positive value is equal to or greater than the negative input, the comparator itself will output a value of one. And you can use this to work as a switch um, by letting that one be the value that then can go on to something else and and make something else happen on the Zoya. Um, and if you set the negative values now to the different values that come from the MIDI fighter twister and that causes that is the value exact value when or actually a little bit below the value when the value when the light changes. So I'll just show you now. So the first light comes on at oh, there we are. A MIDI value of one that doesn't show here actually, but it's 0 0.0079, which is one divided by 128. And so the first value of my first comparator here, uh, I did actually make a comparator for zero as well, but I'll get back to that. So the first comparator that I want to light up when you get to the first bar dot showing is a little bit less than 0 0.0079. You can't have it the same because then it won't light up. So it has to be a little bit less. So this is 0 0.0073. If I increase this to 79 now, you can see it isn't actually on. So I have to move it down to 73 and it comes on. And this light is then connected to these pixels 
so that when that gets the value of 1, these pixels light up uh, and show a digit of 1. And likewise, I have, this is one I made afterwards, here also a 0 comparator that is connected to the digit 0. So, so far so good. So 1, and we go up to the next dot, which then is a 2, and you can see the light here comes on on the second one. The value, this is a MIDI input from this knob, by the way, and it says 0 0.0945, and so the negative input on the second comparator is 0 0.0944, so a little bit less, again, than the actual value that comes from the MIDI fighter twister. Um, now, there's a special thing that needs to be done here as well, because you don't want the first light, first comparator, to still be active. You want only one of them to be active at a time, which is essential for a switch to work. And so what I've done is I've sent the output of this comparator to the negative input of the first comparator. So this now gets a value, a negative input value of one point, well, technically it's 1.0079 which is always going to be greater than the positive input. And so this goes off again. And with the next comparator here, the third one, let's put it up to three there, you see this is connected to the negative inputs of both of the first comparators, so that when the third one is the active one, all the previous, the lower value comparators are switched off, so only one is active. And you can see if I move through here, oh, like so, you can see there's only one active at a time. The last one there wasn't room for, so that ended up now here, that is the last one, and that is the 11th one, and the last value is 0 0.9210, because when you get to 11 on the MIDI fighter twister, the MIDI value is a 0 point, or the MIDI value isn't really 0 0.9213, but that is the translation of the MIDI value uh, into the range of 0 to 1 that the Zoya operates with, and that is 0 0.9213. And that, my friends, is how you can create a switch that goes from 0 to 11. Um, so it has an off, and it has 11 values. And in order to use it for something more fancy than just uh, creating a number display like this, you um, can connect it to these values, the ones that come out there, you can connect them to anything um, that has an effect on whatever patch you're doing. And um, just a nice little trick I thought I'd show you, and uh, I hope you find it useful. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, anything like that, if you enjoyed this, please leave a comment, please like and share and subscribe and all those things, add the video to public playlists, share it on social media, and join me on Patreon if you like seeing the videos I make and you want to see more of them. Um, at the moment, I don't have any great perks for patrons on Patreon. Um, they do, you do get discounts on... Uh, an artwork that may not be interesting to all of you, but that is an option. And um, also I have some free audio files, but there, there will be more. There will be more eventually, but at the moment it's not exactly a busy place. But as, um, as more people join up, I will add more perks um, to... Um, to make more of an incentive for it as well. At the moment, it is just if you really want to support my work with a tiny little bit, um, you are free to do so. Uh, but absolutely no obligation. You can watch all my videos for free. So, thanks for watching, and I'll see you again in my next video, uh, hopefully soon, and uh, goodbye for now. Bye-bye.